Hi, I'm Hugh Osgood. I'm a church leader in the UK and it's my privilege to be able to present one of the 12 keys for church growth that we're looking at in this series. I'm actually going to be looking at discipleship and in order to share this with you, I'm going to read the Great Commission, that passage at the end of Matthew's Gospel, which is so important when we look at discipleship. It says this in Matthew 28 verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, in those few verses, there are some things that are really important. It talks about making, it talks about baptizing, and it talks about teaching. And all of those things, in some ways, are relevant to discipleship. It also talks about the nations. It's discipling the nations. So there's a big commission here. It's not just something really small. And it's obviously a real priority for the Lord Jesus because he's sharing this right at the end of the life, his life. You can see that this fits really with where we're at at the beginning of Acts chapter 1 when he's promising them the Holy Spirit to come upon them to empower them for their ministry. And this is the commissioning that goes alongside that equipping and that enabling. So he's talking about the nations. He's also talking about the name. He says, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he's also talking about the nature, really the nature of what discipleship is. And that's what I want to touch on for a moment. Let's talk about making, first of all, because really, when we talk about discipleship, we're not talking about appointing someone as a disciple. We're talking about making someone into a disciple. And it's a process that the Lord wants us to be involved in. He's saying to his disciples, you've been discipled by me, now I want you to disciple others. But when he's talking to them about discipling others, he's actually saying that really you've got to get them into the hands of the Lord Jesus, just as the same way as you've been shaped in the hands of the Lord Jesus. In some ways, we're not trying to be the ones that are doing the molding. If you think about the potter's wheel that's described in Jeremiah, it's a case of reminding people to be like the clay that stays on the wheel so that the hands of the Lord can do the molding in their lives. So for me, that's a really big part of discipleship. I'm not making people my disciples. I'm making people disciples of the Lord Jesus. And I want people to understand that it's the Lord Jesus that's doing the shaping. I'm just keeping the clay on the wheel so that he can shape their lives and maybe give them some advice and encouragement along the way. So making is really important. But there's also this question about baptizing and discipleship has to start somewhere. And it's really important to understand that what we're doing in discipleship is we're not trying to provide a set of rules and regulations to help people in their deadness. We're trying to encourage people and guide them in their life. So really, <laughs> discipleship isn't about just taking a bunch of people and saying, I'm going to teach you to be Christians. It's actually taking people that have become alive in Christ and saying, now I'm going to help you in your relationship with the Lord Jesus, through your Bible reading, through your fellowship with him, through prayer, to actually be molded into his likeness. And that starting point of baptism is really there to say that we need to be working with people that are alive in the spirit. So we could be talking about baptism in water, which I believe is there for believers as a starting point in their Christian life to say, now I'm dead to the old and alive in Christ, which is the very first point of discipleship. But it's also talking about the baptism in the spirit because we need to be alive in the spirit if we're going to be discipled in Christ. So we've talked about the need for making. We've talked about the importance of baptizing so that we're actually living people that can be molded in Christ likeness. But the third thing is teaching. And when it talks about teaching here in Matthew 28, it's actually saying that we've got to teach in a very accurate way. It says that we should teach people to observe all things that the Lord Jesus himself has commanded. And that's really important because it's very easy to teach people all kinds of things, some of which are, are, are really quite irrelevant. And we end up, if we're not careful, a bit like the, 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 the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the past who turned people into their own disciples with stacks of rules and regulations which really weren't the commands of Christ at all. So we have an obligation in our discipling of others to make sure that we're teaching them the principles of Christ. So really, it's all about Jesus. It's about being a disciple of the Lord Jesus, not a disciple of his disciple, but actually following him as we are following him. And... It's, it's really for disciples to be discipling others so that we're on this journey together. 
So I'm going to finish really talking about discipleship with, with a question, which is, do we all need someone to be mentoring us? And in some ways, I think it's really good that each one of us is able to look to other people to encourage us. But there's something about this passage which is saying that we shouldn't just be disciples, but we should be disciplers. We should be part of the people that are actually linking people up with this process of being transformed into the likeness of Jesus. So yes, by all means, draw from everyone you can. My life experience has been, I've had the benefit of many people speaking into my life, and I've really tried to learn from every single one of them. So learn from everyone you can, but then share everything that you receive, because freely you've received, so freely give. And in that way, you'll be a good disciple, and you'll be encouraging others to be good disciples too.